Hey everyone, I'm Lauren Bolander. And I'm James Davison, driver of the LifeLock Sam Schmidt Motorsports Dallara. And this is Up to Speed. James, thanks for joining us here at Up to Speed. Thank you. You had a really wild weekend this past weekend at Mid-Ohio, but you said going into the weekend that you were pretty much going to sit back and just let this one come to you, and that's pretty much what you did. Yeah, well, I, I didn't quite sit back, but my goal was just to keep it on the track, and that race was always going to be about who was going to make the least amount of mistakes and who was going to be fast, and in the end, I guess I put a tick in both of the boxes. <laughs> <laughs> At, at what point were you nervous that, I don't know, that you might be one of the ones making those mistakes? Um, well, I, I made a mistake early on in the race with the brake bias. I locked up and I went off at turn four from about fifth place. I went back to about 14th and then I, I knew there was 30 minutes to go. I didn't panic. I knew I had the speed and I just started picking off cars, passing a few people and just staying out of trouble, finding the grip level, and I yeah, just brought it home. And it's a great result for you know, my team and LifeLock, Sam Schmidt. Right, this, uh, an experience like this weekend can certainly turn your momentum around. What do you think it, you know, what does this speak to for the outlook for the rest of the season? Well, in the last two races, I've had a pole position and a victory. And uh, I've, you know, I led half the race at Nashville. So going into Kentucky, we should be very strong. We, it's no doubt we should, shouldn't be competing for the pole position and the win. So you know, I'm, I've got high expectations for the rest of the year. I've got a lot of points to make up to get a decent championship finish position. But you know, I've got uh, the support behind me from my team. and. You know, I'm on a roll at the moment, so I intend on keeping it going. Right, you are in 14th right now in the points. What do you think would be a realistic ending goal for you? I think about seventh place, looking at the points, is where I where I can re basically recover to. Mm -hmm. Is the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. um, I've just got to continue, you know, scoring points, and it just seemed like whatever I did, I could not get a finish. You know, if it was cut tires or qualifying, it get cancelled, and I'd run it on championship points, uh, etc. So. Yeah, just got to keep doing what I'm doing and, you know, I should be looking good at the end of this. You have this next weekend off, but the IndyCar Series is going to head to Edmonton. Yes. You've actually ran at that track before. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, I ran uh, when I was running for Team Australia in the Atlantic Series. Um, I ran there and I can definitely tell you that it was the most physical circuit that I've ever driven. It was uh, so many high-speed corners with not much time to rest. And, a lot of drivers were very tired at the end of that race. Um, you know, people were pacing themselves, etc. So let's hope all the IndyCar drivers and especially Paul Trace has been in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> right. Looking ahead, you said maybe a seventh place finish might be good for the championship standings, but from here on out, with the tracks you have left to run at, yep. how many more wins can we expect from you? I think it's it's realistic that I can I can win another one. It really is. It wasn't just a fluke that I, I won at Mid Ohio. You know, I recovered from 15th and drove to the front. Um, as I said, it was about who made the least amount of mistakes. I I made the least amount of mistakes, and I was fast at the end of the race when it when it mattered. Um, just uh, going to Kentucky with been strong on ovals and uh, there's no reason why we won't be strong in Kentucky. We're testing there with a bunch of other teams this Thursday, so I've got high expectations. All right, well we have high expectations for you, James. Thanks for stopping by here at Up to Speed. Thank you, Dave. We'll all be behind you to see that seventh place finish in the stands, or maybe a little better with all of our support in the series. So. Yes. yes, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Tune in to ESPN2 today at 2 p.m. to watch both races and James' first win. Then tune in to IndyCar.com for IndyCar series practice at 315 and 645, or get in on the go with live time and scoring on your mobile by texting IndyCar to 234-500. And finally, don't forget to tune in Saturday, July 26th for the Rexall Edmonton Indy at 5 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. I'm Laura Bolander and you're up to speed. <laughs>